talk about what furries do. And I think this is a really, really important question for furries to keep in mind because oftentimes we're asked to explain what furry is to other people. And if we don't sort of have an idea in mind, uh, it's going to get really ugly because laypersons don't have any idea what the furry fandom is. If I say Star Trek fan, they go, oh, this is a person who is a fan of the television show Star Trek. Makes sense. If I say furry, they go, uh, so you're like fuzzy or something? Or you got long hair? Like it's, not, it's not clear from the name what that means. And so it's not intuitive what this means, and so people try to guess what it means. And more often than not, when they try to guess what furry means, it doesn't end up well for furries. <laughs> Usually with disastrous results. All right, so what do furries do? Because when you think about it, furries do a lot more than just sit around and wear fursuits. Uh, we play furry themed video games, we look at furry themed art, furry movies, we uh, people create furry themed music, we costume, we do a whole bunch of stuff. My personal favorite right now is this one. Yes. I'm not being paid for them or anything, I just really like this game, so I'm not promoting it. But a perfect example of a furry themed game. Personas are perhaps the thing that for no, 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 get away for the punchline, get away for the punchline. <laughs> Personas are perhaps the most universal thing that furries do. More than 95% of furries have a persona or have created a persona at some time in the past. Now, the vast majority of furries have at any one time just one persona. Some furries, of course, have more than one persona at any given time. They may alternate between them depending on mood, depending on mindset. But for the most part, most furries have a relatively small number of personas at any given time. They may change them over the course of their life, but if they do so, they tend to do so either in a very gradual fashion or only after some very severe life event. And this is because furries put a lot of themselves into their personas. When we ask furries about their personas, they say, my persona is basically me. I put so much of my personality and so much of who I am into my persona, and we know from psychological research that personalities change very slowly. Again, unless you've been subjected to some really extreme life events, or a lot of time has gone by, you're usually very much the same person tomorrow that you were yesterday. Uh, so we ask furries, why did you pick the persona species you do? Uh, they tend to say it either allows them to experience something novel that they might otherwise not get to experience in their day-to-day -day life, but the second biggest reason is because it represents my ideal self. It's the kind of person I want to be. When you're trying to become a better person. So for a lot of furries, their personas are me, but a slightly better looking, happier, more outgoing, more friendly version of me. And uh, personas can spill over into your day-to-day -day life. So we've actually studied the extent to which furries say, who my persona is kind of bleeds over and spills over into my my day-to-day -day activities. <laughs> so we found, for example, that if you're a fursuiter, you're more likely to say that you're kind of in your fursona's mindset more in your day-to-day -day life than non-fursuiters are. We also find that the more you say your persona spills over into your day-to-day -day life, the more discrimination you experience for being a furry because it's a little harder to be a fur uh, to hide being a furry from others. The more important it is for you to have a persona that's relatively unique, perhaps not quite this unique, our good friend Ruben the Sandwich Persona. Um, uh, the more likely you are, the more spillover there is, the more likely you are to say my persona represents who I am, but also who I would like to be. Now based on this, this sort of uh, data, we actually ran an experiment at Anthrocon last year, uh, where we gave people multiple versions of a survey to see whether or not personas serve kind of a protective function. They help protect your self-esteem against threats. So we had two different versions of our survey. In one version, you experienced a threat to your self-esteem. So we asked you to write about all the things about yourself that you don't like. So obviously, if I asked you to do that, you might not come out on the other end feeling very great. You might have sort of a, a negative mindset afterwards. Now, for some of these people, we followed that question up by asking them to tell us all about your persona. For some of them, we told them to tell us about their persona before the threat. And for some people, we asked them to tell us about what they had for breakfast, a control condition. And what we measured in this case was negative emotions. Now keep in mind, this is happening at a furry convention, so it's kind of hard to get any kind of negative emotion out of someone at a furry convention. <laughs> that said, we managed to do it a little bit. So here's the threat condition. If you just get a threat and nothing else, 
your negative emotions were kind of, they were up there, they were elevated. So uh, in the distraction condition where it tells us about breakfast, that didn't help. So if you just wrote about every single thing you didn't like about yourself, then you talked about your breakfast, you still don't feel very great about yourself. <laughs> now if we told, asked you to tell us about your persona after we threatened you, it's too late. You're already kind of in a crappy mood. Uh, it didn't do much to help. Now if we didn't threaten you at all, you were down here. So there's a bit of a difference in negative mood here. Look what happened when we asked them to tell us about your persona before the threats. Tell us how great your persona is. Tell us all the good things about your persona. So people are talking about how great their persona was and they're thinking, yeah, my persona's amazing and it's pretty much me. Oh, bad stuff about me? Uh, there's some bad stuff out there, but remember, I'm awesome. <laughs> and you can see that they look a lot closer to having not been threatened at all when we ask them about their persona beforehand. So we think this is some preliminary evidence, sort of the study one in, in, a, in a series of studies we're doing, suggesting that a persona might serve a protective function for furries. Having a self that's sort of an idealized version of you can help protect your self-esteem when you're getting bullied or when sort of life has you down. It helps you kind of pick yourself up and feel good about yourself. I may not be that great, but my persona is me and my persona is kind of awesome. So, persona species. I'll give you a second to drink it. This is my favorite, by the way. So, so shout it out. What is the most popular species in the fandom? Wolf. So between, so, so about a quarter of furries identify either as a wolf or have wolf as part of the hybrid of their persona species. Followed closely by foxes, dragons, cats, dogs, tigers, mythological species, etc., etc. Uh, these are the kinds of species that we either see as pets or that we commonly see represented uh, in the media that we consume. So it's not a big surprise. Um, we actually had a great question a few years ago at one of these talks. Uh, during the Q&A, someone asked, does it matter whether your persona is more anthro or more feral? Is it more like just an animal or more like a, a person? And we thought, that's, that's a pretty good idea. So we decided to, to, to ask about it. And the first thing we found is that furries tended to really slant towards the anthropomorphic side. Most furries say their persona is very anthropomorphized with sort of some features of, of animals, so animal-like features. That said, there were some furries who said that their personas were quite feral. Now, we want to see whether or not this told us anything about you as a person. Can we predict anything about you depending on whether your persona was anthropomorphic or feral? And the truth is, not much. We do know that Therians, people who actually identify as animals, they don't say, I like animals, but no, no, I'm the spirit of an animal trapped in a human body, that sort of thing, they tend to say that they have personas that are much more feral in nature, which kind of makes sense, it's internally consistent. Uh, we also find that women tend to, on average, pick slightly more feral personas than do men. Again, on average. Beyond that, whether your persona is anthropomorphic or feral doesn't tell us much more about your personality, the kind of person you are, none of the demographics. We didn't find much other relation, very much in terms of other relationships. So this is this is a really cool study. Stick with me for a, for because it's great. So the media and, and furries alike have asked us. So do certain kinds of people pick cats? Do certain kinds of people pick foxes and dogs? And we struggle with how to study, with the, study this for a number of years. It's kind of a tough question to, to wrap your head around. So finally, we took an approach that involved multiple studies. In the first study, we said, okay, let's just figure out what the stereotypes are. Before we even go to test them, let's just see what people think the stereotypes are. So in this study, a couple of years ago, we asked people, what is your persona species? Tell us three stereotypes that exist about that species. It doesn't matter whether they're true for you, just tell us what the stereotypes are. And we got a huge list. The most popular ones were loyal, sly, strong, fun. For anyone who thinks the furry fandom is all about sex, sex was like number 33 on the list. <laughs> Only 2% of people said that sex had anything to do with their persona species. And we'll come back to this idea that furry isn't a fetish later on. So, we can build profiles using this data of what stereotypes are associated most commonly with different species. Wolves are associated with loyalty. <laughs> Foxes are associated with being sly or cunning. Not surprising. Dragons are associated with strength. Strength seems to be the real dominant uh, stereotype associated with them. Uh, I'm ashamed to be a cat. <laughs> So that's not good. Uh, dogs, perhaps even more than wolves, associated with loyalty. 
Uh, uh, rabbits, rather, associated with, with being shy, timid. Uh, otters are pretty one-dimensional. <laughs> I don't think we're surprising anyone with that one. All right, now, there is a stereotype about foxes. <laughs> There's a stereotype about foxes and sex and promiscuity, and I want to tell you that there's some truth to it, but foxes, you're not the one that's the most associated with sex. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> now this makes sense when you consider that we're a society that has playboy bunnies, we have expressions like breeding like rabbits, but this just shows to show that, you know, some of the stereotypes can be surprising. Now, that was part one. Those are what the stereotypes are. But is there truth to them? Is it actually the case that people who pick wolves or dogs <coughs> identify themselves as being more loyal people? So in the second study, we gave people a huge personality test and a whole bunch of adjectives, and we snuck a bunch of these words into them. We buried it, so it wasn't really obvious what we were looking for. And we asked them about the persona species way later in the survey so that it wouldn't cloud their initial responses. And we wanted to see, okay, so the people who pick wolves, do they actually call themselves more loyal? Are the cats actually as lazy as they seem? <laughs> uh, we found that some of the stereotypes had some merit. So wolves and dogs, actually, those people called themselves more loyal. Aww. 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 Foxes actually called themselves more cunning, more sly as people. Bears and wolves were people who tend to call themselves more physically strong. Foxes and bears were more likely to be women. Cats were more likely to be uh, women. Bear, <laughs> fox and bears, men. Cats. <laughs> but there were some stereotypes that just came out of left field. That just we had no idea, and they seemed to be some truth to them, even if we don't realize they're stereotypes. For example, wolves and dogs were the most promiscuous species. <laughs> the least likely of the species to be non, or they're the most likely to be non-heterosexual and the most <coughs> likely to be in a long-term relationship. We also found that foxes, not rabbits, were the most shy of the species. Wow. Big surprise. So, isn't science fun? <laughs> All right, so at another convention, we were asked by someone, well, does it matter whether your persona species is a predator or a prey? And this was based on an observation they had at one convention that a person in a wolf fursuit was chasing down a person in a gazelle fursuit. <laughs> I said, are the predators picking on the prey species? And we thought, that's, that's a fair question, so let's, let's ask about it. So we found, first of all, that predators are far more prevalent than prey species, by about three to one. Uh, these numbers don't add up to 100 because the rest of it were uh, both or neither. So we're looking just at clear cases of predators and clear cases of prey species. We also found in kind of analogous fashion that carnivores outnumbered herbivores by uh, almost two to three to one. So our hypothesis was that the predator species would pick on the, spray, the prey species. The data found no differences. So in terms of how much you would bully other people due to the species, how much you've been bullied because of your species, uh, do you believe that predator and prey species should act a certain way? The predator and the prey species did not differ at all in these things. So there doesn't seem to be any evidence, at least, from self-reports, that the predators are picking on the prey or the prey are more victimized than the predators are. We did find one small difference here, and that's for this one item specifically. If you're getting picked on for your fursona species, you should probably change your species. Predator species were a little bit more likely to say, yeah, you should probably change your species than, than prey species were. All right, so this is a little confusing, but I'll explain it. This is based on the idea the media has that at a furry convention, all the dogs go to one room and all the cats go to one room, and the cats and the dogs hate each other. <laughs> so, the blue bar. So this is how much you agree with the item. So this means strongly disagree, this means strongly agree. So the blue bar. Does a person's persona species affect whether or not you would interact with them? No. no. For example, don't, don't be silly. If I know that you're a cat or a dog or a wolf, it, it doesn't affect whether I'm going to hang out with you. But the red and the green bars here show a little bit more agreement. This is the idea that a person's persona tells me something about them. So if I know that you're a cat, it's not going to make me not want to hang out with you, but it does tell me a little bit about the kind of a person I think you are. So furries are thinking that there's something useful to be had in persona species, but they're not making gross decisions about whether or not to hang out with someone based solely on their persona species.